Sabah to everyone to start our program this evening. Please all rise and we will sing to God be the glory. sa mga langit, nag-apasalamat kami na kawada ka mo, O Lord, sa tibok si mana, sa pagbantay ka namo, sa mga panalangin nga ang nadawat, sa mga uh, kaiwan sa panglawas kami nag-apasalamat ka ni mo, O ning uh, taknaa, aning asap kami nag-asugat, si mga nang balaan, nag-tipok ni sa balaan ang puanan, ikaw mag-apanalangin ka namo, mag-agiyas sa matagusa, kuha ang mga tagsatag sa ka mga Adi ah, mayong mga pangunaw na araw makapokus kami sa pagtuon diya sa si mga pulong o usaha kami sa pagpanalangin sa uh, labi na sa tanang mga bantay ni ni uh, adaw nga balaan nga kami mong usahon aron makahimok kami sa pagdaig pasalamat diya kanimo sa si mong kaayongan ni kanamu o pasailuha kami sa mga sala diin kami naka sala diya kanimo o kinimong mga pagdawaton upan sa tabang sa mga Espiritu Santo Amen. To all those who are watching us on Facebook, happy preparation day because most likely it's Friday morning for you, whatever you're at, and most likely in Canada, United States, Europe, Africa, South America, as Sabbath has just begun here. And to my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ, Mayong Gabi Sa Adlong Ikpapulay. On what is a beautiful evening, we had a beautiful day here today, a summer-like day. It felt like summer, a gorgeous, hot, sunny day in what is here in the Philippines, the rainy season. 
So that's a nice praise to God. Thank you, Father in heaven. What I'm about to share tonight is probably one of the most important presentations I've ever made. To everyone who are watching us and here too, please pay attention. In these end times, a growing number of Christians and Bible scholars are fixated on Bible prophecy, especially when it comes to the mark of the beast. Some Christians sincerely believe that the mark of the beast is already here. It's either the RFID chip or a tattoo or a change in someone's DNA or even the vaccine. What they fail to understand is twofold. They need to, and they need to identify first who the beast is, rather than making wild assumptions as to what the mark of the beast is. Identify first who the beast is, and then you will know what its mark is. And those who make these failed predictions about what the mark of the beast is also need to understand that the mark of the beast has to do with worship. I've been saying this and hammering this so many times. Not because I say so, but because the Bible says so. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 9, which I will read later on. Revelation chapter 16 verse 2. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20 and Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. The mark of the beast is directly associated or related with worship. Read those verses in the King James Bible. Read them. Jot down those verses and read them. You will see in each and every one of those verses that I mentioned, you will read the mark of the beast and then right beside it, worship. Therefore, the mark of the beast has absolutely nothing to do with the RFID chip or the change in a person's DNA or a tattoo or the vaccine. Okay, we need to understand that. What the apostate Protestant churches like to quote about buying and selling and the RFID chip, well, let's read that verse, okay? In Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. I'll read it first in English and then Brother John Michael will read it in Cebuano. Okay? Revelation chapter 13, verse 17 says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he had he that had the mark. Save he that had the mark. You need to have the mark first. I'll repeat again the verse. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Okay? So you need to have the mark of the beast first, and then you'll be able to buy and sell. Brother John Michael will read the same verse in Cebuano. In Adayag, Kapitulo 13, Versikulo 17, Nga tungod ni ini, walay bisan kinsa, nga makapamalit o makapamaligya, gawas ko na naakan niya ang maong marka, nga mao ang ngalan sa mapintas nga mananap o ang numero sa iyang ngalan. Okay, thank you. So that was just my introduction, just to bring clarity as to what the mark of the beast is related to. It has to do with worship. To all watchmen who are watchful of prophetic events, the video clip that you're about to see should ring alarm bells. What you're about to see is absolutely staggering and shocking when it comes to Bible prophecy, yet the news media is always quiet about these events. They like to, have, to hide the facts because they want to keep you in the blur, in, in the fog, by not knowing what is important. They don't want you to know reality. They don't want you to know Bible prophecy. They want you to remain uninformed as to what is really going on when it comes to Bible prophecy. Now, let's watch this one-minute video. It's very telling. 
And this happened just a few days ago. Please note, look at the people who are in the video. Pay attention to the words that the speaker or the narrator is saying, and then we'll address its prophetic implications. Pay attention and look very carefully. Representatives of several world religions gathered at the Vatican to sign a joint appeal on climate change, which will be presented to global leaders at the United Nations Conference, COP26, in Glasgow in November, urging them to step up their efforts to stop climate change. Among those present were Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, and delegations representing the Russian Orthodox Church and the Coptic Orthodox Church. Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism were also represented. The Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, who in 2019 signed the document on human fraternity with Pope Francis, was also in attendance. Nearly 40 religious figures spoke on behalf of their communities, highlighting the importance of working together to address environmental issues. And we need this dialogue in order simply to be, simply to breathe, simply to love one another. I think they have, as I said, a unique voice in being able to talk to their populations, but also to world leaders. That second video is going to be shown tomorrow. So what, what you just saw is, for those who have discernment, you will understand what's happening. What you saw in the video is one of the most important and serious prophetic signs or harbingers that will lead to the enforcement of the mark of the beast. The beast or kingdom is the Vatican. The same kingdom which has a number, image, and a mark. According to Revelation chapter 13 and also chapter 14 and, and chapter 20. No other kingdom or country in the world has a name, image, uh, not a name, but a number, image, and a mark. No other country other than the Vatican. And that number, as we know, is 666, which points to the different titles of the Pope. According to the video that we just saw, on Monday, October 4th, just 25 days ago, the Vatican, which is the first beast or kingdom of Revelation 13, to which the dragon, which is Satan, gives its power to, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, hosted a meeting on climate change action. Climate change is the false gospel being preached by the man of sin in Rome, Pope Francis, who is also known by his real name of Jorge Bergoglio. In the video, we witness an agreement to the Vatican's climate change action plan that was agreed to by approximately 40 religious leaders, all of whom reject the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua as the Son of God, the Messiah, and as a Savior for all of humanity. Not one person in there believes in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and as the Messiah, including that man in that white suit that you just saw and his puppets. They don't believe in the Son of God. They don't. They are fakes. What we saw in the video is a major, significant, and critical event that will lead to the enforcement of the Vatican's beast mark, hence the mark of the beast. What we saw in the video is more evidence of the Vatican's push for a one world religion movement, which is now in full force, in full gear, with the recent approval of the Pope's false gospel of climate change by the nearly 40 religious leaders that we saw in the video. Okay, you saw religious leaders from Islam, Judaism, and the Apostolic Christian churches, and other religions. At the end of the clip, Mr. Alok Sharma, the man that you saw at the end of the clip with the glasses, a high-ranking member of the British government and who is also the president of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, known as COP26, stated that the world's religious leaders who signed the Pope's Climate Change Action Plan 
are in a position to influence world leaders to take action on climate change. So this man is saying that religious leaders should have an impact on political leaders as to what should be said and done. Whatever happened to the separation of church and state? The United Nations Climate Change Conference will be held in Glasgow, Scotland from October 31st, that's in two days from now, to November 12th, 2021. What a coincidence that the Pope met with these religious leaders on October 4th, just before the United, United Nations Conference on Climate Change. What a coincidence. Is it just a mere coincidence that the Pope and his 40 religious puppets sign an historic agreement to push forward the Vatican Papacy's climate change action plan only a few days prior to the United Nations Conference on Climate Change? Is this just a mere coincidence? Of course not. And then after that meeting that was held on October 4th, we just saw in the video, the very next week, on October 11th, the Pope met with politicians on October 11th who will be attending also the Climate Change Conference in Scotland. So first the Pope meets with the religious leaders, his, his little puppets, who keep saying yes to the Pope, and the man in the white suit there that, that you keep seeing. And then the following week, he meets the Pope, he meets with the politicians who will be going to that conference on climate change. Wow, someone's trying to put pressure on these people to say yes to the Pope's plans. So the Pope, as I just mentioned, so the Pope first met with 40 religious leaders to agree with his false gospel of climate change on October 4th. And then the following week, on October 11th, he meets with politicians who will be participating at the United Nations climate change meeting or conference. So the timing of this agreement on climate change between the Pope and his 40 religious friends, and then with the politicians who will be attending a meeting on climate change is definitely no accident. It's all timed, all well, properly scheduled and timed. And now, the man that you saw in that white suit again, Pope Francis, will meet Joe Biden, Catholic US president very shortly. What do you think Pope Francis is gonna to say to Joe Biden? The exact same thing that he said to the religious leaders and to the politicians, and he's gonna say that to sleepy Joe Biden, and sleepy Joe will receive his instructions from the Pope as to what to do. Why? Sleepy Joe Biden is Catholic. He's gonna obey his boss, the Pope. The Vatican is very crafty, as its God, Satan, is, in wanting to have everyone agree with their plans, narratives, objectives, and agendas. Therefore, this climate change action plan agreement between the Vatican and the 40 religious leaders and the politicians will be fresh on the minds of all the nations of the world who will take part at the United Nations Conference on Climate Change beginning on October 31st. Through his meeting with the religious leaders on climate change, the Pope wants the world, including the participants at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, to take immediate action on climate change, and thus the world will be united as one, or that the world will have one mind with the Pope, you have all the religious leaders of the world saying yes to the Pope, the man in that white suit. And you have politicians going to the United Nations Conference on Climate Change who are saying yes to the Pope. And then you'll have Joe Biden, the leader of the second beast of Revelation 13, receiving his instructions from the Pope. So the Pope has all, has everything covered the religious leaders, the politicians, and Joe Biden. Very crafty. He wants to have peace, his way of peace, which will lead to utter destruction. 
Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. That's precisely what the Pope wants. That the world will have one mind with him and his false gospel of climate change so that the world, by having one mind with the Pope, will eventually accept the Vatican beast's mark of Sunday worship, which goes contrary to the seven-day Sabbath commandment of the Lord thy God. So he's using climate change to condition the world to have the religious leaders, the political leaders, get together in unison and to obey the Pope. That's what the Pope wants. Once the world is united under the Pope's banner through his false gospel of climate change, the Pope will strongly encourage a deceived world to agree with his mark of Sunday worship as an attempt to alleviate the increasing natural calamities around the world. What the Pope will never admit to the world is that the natural calamities which will increase exponentially around the world in the following years represents God's judgments upon a sin-filled world to warn the world that His Holy Son, Jesus Christ Yeshua, is coming back soon. But the, but the Pope doesn't want you to know that. He wants to put climate change on, the, on your, uh, as you being guilty of climate change. He's blaming human activity. He's taking God out of the picture and he's putting the blame on you. Human beings, God's special creation. You wonder what kind of a spirit that man has. We all know which, which kind of a spirit that they have. But the Vatican does not want the world to know that Christ is coming back soon. That's precisely, precisely why the Pope keeps talking about his false gospel of climate change as being caused by human activity, rather than admitting that the calamities are harbingers to Christ's impending return. What we see going on is Matthew 24 being fulfilled. What we need to understand is that the enforcement of Sunday worship by the Vatican beast with the help of the United States, which is the second beast or kingdom of Revelation chapter 13, will only make things worse. Why? Sunday rest and worship is not commanded by God anywhere in the Bible, but is holy and permanent. Seven day Sabbath is, and yet the apostate Christian world rejects redefines and forgets God's holy seven-day Sabbath, which points to the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua as the Creator. Satan hates the seven-day Sabbath because he knows all too well that the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua is identified as the Creator, and that irritates the devil. Christ is the Creator, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. So what did the devil do in trying to prevent Christians from recognizing Christ as a creator on the Lord's seven-day Sabbath? He changed the seven-day Sabbath of the Lord thy God to Sunday through his Babylonian Roman Catholic Church at its council of Laodicea in 364. Pope Francis, the man of sin in the Vatican, which again receives its power from Satan. You need to understand that. The dragon is Satan in Revelation 12, verse 9. The dragon in Revelation 13, verse 2, gives its power and authority to the beast. That beast is the Vatican. Do I make myself clear? That beast has a number, image, and a mark. No, no other country in the world has those attributes. Nobody else does. So Pope Francis, the man of sin in the Vatican, which again receives its power from the devil, and he does, in, in uh, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, has been pushing, as I keep saying all along in my presentation, his false gospel of climate change or, or global warming since he became Pope in March of 2013. Since becoming Pope, we've seen the United Nations, Greta Thunberg, a little girl of 16 years old who thinks she's an expert, in climate change. Greta, go back to school. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, 
major corporations, banks, Hollywood, governments, and the biggest indoctrination institutions in the world, including public schools, colleges, and universities, regurgitating, repeating what the Pope is saying, because the world wanders after the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. The Pope is using his climate change agenda to unite the world together so that he can be recognized as the world's leader with the purpose of enforcing his mark. Hence, the mark of the beast. Again, the beast or kingdom is the Vatican. Like the devil who lied to Eve by saying, ye shall not surely die. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, when God had said otherwise beforehand, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, like the devil, the Pope is uplifting the creation or the environment rather than God, which points to Romans chapter 1, verse 25, which says, who changed the truth of God into a lie, into a lie, and worship and serve the creature. And the creature is a creation of the creator. Who, and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. So, who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's what the Pope is doing. That creature is an environment of which the Pope said in September of 2020 needs a vital rest. Rest. Sabbath means rest, but the Pope's rest is Sunday. He wants Sunday to be recognized as the day of rest, a vital rest for the environment, as he stated in September 2020. Of a truth, there's no climate change. There's no climate emergency. We've had Al Gore saying back in 2003, 2004, that the ice caps in the Arctic Ocean will melt away by 2012, 2014. I've been flying over the, I've been flying from Canada to the Philippines since 2017. And from Canada, I flew over the Arctic Ocean it's full of ice. Al Gore, Al Gore, you're a liar. There are several studies that expose the climate change hoax, which, which is being perpetrated by the Pope, who's under the devil's influence, and the devil is the father of lies. There are several studies. Tony Heller has a wonderful YouTube channel in which he exposes the lies of climate, of climate change. I invite you to watch his videos for that purpose. Again, earthquakes, floods, and erupting volcanoes are not caused by, human, by the human race. These are God's judgments, warning the masses that His Holy Son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Emmanuel, Yehovah, the Prince of Peace, is coming back soon. So what does the Bible say about the mark of the beast? Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 11 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, there's that word again, worship. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, not upon or on, but in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast who worshiped the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. Brother John Michael, please read in Cebuano, 
for our dear brothers here. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 to 11. Pinadaya kapitulo 14 bersikulo 9 antad sa 11 O misunod ang laing madulunda ang ikatulo nga nagingon sa makusog nga tingog Kung adunay mo simba sa mapintas nga mananap og sayang larawan ug pamarka sa iyang agtan o sa iyang kamot siya usab baga inom sa binos kapungod sa Dios nga pagatagayon nga walay sambog ngadto skupa sa iyang kasuko o siya pagasakiton pinaagi sa kalayog o supri Diya sa tubangan sa mga balaang manulunda o sa tubangan sa kordero. O gangaso sa ilang kasakit magakutbo hangtod sa kanturan. O sila dili makatagamtam sa pahulay sa magabi o sa maadlaw. Sila nga musimba sa pintas ng mananap o sa iyang larawan. O ang bisan kinsa nga minarkahan sa iyang ngalan. Thank you, thank you Brother John Michael. So again, upon reading those verses, in the King James Bible, not those fake versions here, eh? on or upon, it's in, in your forehead where the mind is to make decisions, where the brain is to make decisions, to accept the mark or not. And when you accept it, then with your hand, you will not work on that day of the mark of the beast Sunday, when that day comes. But if you do that, the results or the outcome is written in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9, 10, and 11. It doesn't look really good. In the Bible passage that we just read about the mark of the beast, those who will accept the mark with their be of, of the beast with their minds, which is in the forehead, will worship the Vatican's Pope as their God or its image, the 501c3, Protestant, Orthodox, and even Adventist churches, and the SEA is in deep trouble. They're in huge trouble. I'll, I'll probably do a video about that later on, another time, or a presentation. So those who will worship the Vatican's Pope will see the Pope as their God, or they will worship its image, which I just explained, the 501c3 government registered Protestant, Orthodox, and Adventist churches, and they will be eliminated, eliminated completely, at the hands of a just but offended God. Society, the world, has had thousands upon thousands of years to repent and to get right with God. We are in the end times. We see what the man of sin, the man in that white suit is doing. He wants to bring unity with all these religions and with all these politicians going to that conference on climate change. They want to he wants to create that one mind with them to have them obey him, that evil man. And that points to Revelation, Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. Look it up. In the same way, the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church is linked to the Vatican State. The 501, 501c3 registered churches are linked to the U.S. government. Thus, the image of the beast has been created. There's your image of the beast right there. Okay? So the number is 666, which points to the titles of the Pope. The image of the beast are the Protestant, Orthodox, and Adventist churches. Sorry, SEA, but that's the way it is. All these churches are registered with the government in the same way the Roman Catholic Church is linked to the state of the Vatican. You see a union of church and, and state, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. So it's a state united with the church. They're united together. In the same way you have the Protestant churches, the Adventist church, and Orthodox churches united with the U.S. government the same way through that 501c3 entity. And all these churches are Sunday-keeping churches, including the SDA, which has a few local churches which gather for public worship on Sunday. Oh, SDA, what has happened to you? Let's now read what the beast says about its mark. 
I've shared this quote many times with Pastor Craig in our videos. Sunday is our mark of authority. The Vatican admits it. They say that its mark is Sunday through one of their statements. Sunday is our mark of authority. It goes on to say, it's almost ridiculous and blasphemous, the church is above the Bible. Can you believe this? And this transference, this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Oh, the transference of Sabbath observance to Sunday. When did that happen? In 364 at the Catholic Church's Council of Laodicea. Look it up. The Babylonian Roman Catholic Church admits that it transferred the biblical seven-day Sabbath to Sunday. Again, this happened in 364 at the Babylonian Catholic Church's Council of Laodicea. Look it up in the history books. In paragraph 2188 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Babylonian Roman Catholic Church, we read in that, in that catechism, paragraph 2188, in respecting religious liberty, Reli re <laughs> religious liberty. There's no liberty with the Catholic Church, guys. In respecting religious liberty and the common good, common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays and the Church's holy days as legal holidays. Wow. That contradicts exactly what Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11 says. Therefore, the Catholic Church holds an anti-Christ position. It uplifts Sunday. God uplifts in his holy written word, the Sabbath, which contains the Father's endearment name, Abba. The Vatican and her Babylonian Roman Catholic Church says that Sunday is her mark. However, Sunday rest and worship goes contrary to the Lord's holy seven day Sabbath commandments. The Bible clearly, clearly shows and says that the seventh day is the Sabbath. Whose Sabbath? Of the Lord thy God. But Sunday is the false spirit Sabbath of the Pope, who is the man of sin, antichrist, wicked one, and son of perdition. You can read that in the second epistle written by Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 3 to 11. Many will argue in the world and say, oh, what's the big deal? It's just a day. It's just a day? Huh, who cares? No, an emphatic, loud no. It's about obedience to God, which the apostate churches are unwilling to do. If you are breaking the Lord's seven-day Sabbath, the seven-day Sabbath of the Lord thy God, as it is written in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11, the Sabbath, the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. I did not write it, neither did we, but God did with his finger. If you are breaking the seventh day Sabbath of the Lord thy God, it is sin, since sin is a transgression of God's law, and sin leads to death unless it is repented of. Further, the seventh day Sabbath is the only day that is sanctified, blessed, and hallowed by God, the almighty God who rules the universe. Therefore, Sunday is not sanctified, blessed, or hallowed by God. People will say, but Jesus resurrected on Sunday. And what's important to know in the resurrection is the resurrection. To conclude, to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, this very significant agreement between the man of sin in Rome and Antichrist, who is the Pope, and approximately 40 religious leaders, as you saw in the video here, is a harbinger, a precursor, a red flag warning for all those who love God and keep his holy Ten Commandments and have the faith of Jesus. What you saw is a harbinger, a precursor, and a red flag warning. It's about unity with the religious leaders. It's about unity with the world leaders. 
and then the Pope is going to say, that's it. Let's enforce Sunday. And sleepy, sleepy Joe Biden will say yes to that too. To those of eyes to see and ears to hear, what you saw in the video clip shows that we're getting much, much closer to the enforcement of Sunday rest and worship. So the mark of the beast has to do with worship, who you worship, and the day of worship, which will be, prophes will be, which will be the prophesied mark of the beast. Sunday rest and worship will be the prophesied mark of the beast the beast or kingdom, again, is a, is a Vatican, which is referenced to in Revelation chapters 13 and 17. Get ready for the soon enforcement of the mark of the beast. This is not a game. This is not science fiction. This is not a fairy tale. What you saw there is real. There is seriousness in my voice. This is not a game. This is real. Get ready for the soon enforcement of the mark of the beast. And more important, get ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you understand what you saw in that video and its prophetic implications and what it will lead to. May the love peace and grace of the Most High God, who knows the end from the beginning, be with you in these troublesome end times. So be it. Amen. Amen. It is now time to pray and bring an end to this worship service. Let's all pray on bended knee. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, source of eternal love and source of eternal life, who sent his Holy Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, to show us how to live our lives, we say thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are, the all-knowing, omnipotent, intelligent, supreme being, supreme mind, supreme mind. Praise be to you, and glory be to you forevermore. Heavenly Father, we worship you, we praise you, we give you glory, especially on your holy seven-day Sabbath. And the word Sabbath contains your endearment name, Abba. It belongs to you. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. And thank you, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross for the remission of sins. And as per Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, even though our sins may be red as crimson, they shall be made white as snow. Thank you, Father, for showing and providing us with discernment through the Holy Spirit about what's going on in prophecy. The media is not talking about it. The apostate churches are not talking about it. But this church is. We are your end time remnant church. No, we're not boasting ourselves, but this is a fact. We are your end time remnant church. We love you. You provide us with discernment and we share this truth with others to warn the world which is sleeping. It's time, folks, to wake up. Abba, Father, eternal God, ancient of days, we worship you, we praise you, thank you for this revelation tonight and for many Sabbaths to come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Word of God, faithful and true. In His holy name, Yeshua, Emmanuel, you name it. He has so many beautiful names. Abba, Father, in the name of your Holy Son, the Messiah, and Christ. We say thank you through the Holy Spirit of truth. So be it. Amen. Amen.